Intel's Rocket Lake S CPUs have been a lot in the news recently, and we've seen all kinds of results from them, ranging from mediocre ones and all the way to some really great single core performance numbers. And notice how I said single core for that? Well, that's because Intel's CPUs are still lagging behind in multi-core compared to AMD's processors. However, we have seen that in the latest leaks, they are pointing to Intel being able to overtake AMD in gaming once again, with improvements of up to 27% with their 10th gen CPUs. Now, this is of course attributed to their tweaked design and IPC improvements, but I'll let reviewers talk about that once the official reviews and official benchmarks are going to drop sometime mid-March, because they're obviously going to do a way better job than I can do in this video. However, I'd like to point out that there have been some uh, benchmark leaks out of there, which I will be covering here, including a video um, reviewing one of Intel's upcoming CPUs, so definitely check those out if you're are interested by clicking the links in the info cards above because right now I will be starting with 11900k which we've seen being able to hit around 1900 points which would make it 27% faster than last chance 10900k and roughly 24% faster than the 5800x or 5900x. The 11700K with a 5 GHz overclock hit about 1800 points, but we've also seen the 11700K being able to reach a similar performance without the massive overclock, which would of course mean it doesn't have the increased heat output and you're not going to be required to use a beefy cooler to cool these CPUs. Now of course we also don't know uh, what kind of a TDP we're going to be seeing on those CPUs whenever you're going to overclock them, but one one can guesstimate that you might even see that 200 or 250 watts being reached at some point. And those are, of course, the, the power limits for these CPUs. Now, going on with the non-K variant, we've seen that one was about 100 points slower, with 11900KF being quite sluggish compared to the 11900K. However, it's worth pointing out that some of these CPUs have been tested with DDR4 2133 megahertz RAM, so you can't really judge a CPU like that. There is also um, another thing that I'm thinking about because I haven't really looked into how Geekbench um makes those results. I don't know if it has anything to do with the iGPU not being present on the 11900KF, F standing obviously for the uh, version without an iGPU on the CPU, but maybe you guys can let me know about that because I haven't really looked into it. Now moving forward, we've seen that the 11600K and the 11500 were also in the 1600 points neighborhood, which is similar to what you'd see on a stock 5600X. Now obviously we're going to have to see if they are indeed going to be faster than the 5600X in gaming benchmarks, but one could estimate that that might actually happen. Now obviously prices are also going to influence uh, your buying decision, so uh, let's wait for that as well. But the last one we've seen was the 11400, which I also covered in yesterday's video, and there we've seen a score of about 1550 points, but with a slow RAM configuration, we we don't really know if uh, these are indeed the numbers we're going to be seeing after their official launch date and I would like to point out that no they're not going to be all that slow if you're going to use something like 300 megahertz RAM on uh, on that motherboard with that CPU but obviously I'm really interested in knowing what you guys think about Rocket Lake and would you actually consider buying Rocket Lake when you know that Alder Lake might be releasing this year in September let me know in the comment section down below. And if you'd like to know more about pricing and availability for these CPUs, I'm going to try to put some images on screen right now. Otherwise, you're going to find out more information in the video description. And last but not least, I would also like to point out that I watched a really interesting video from Cold Fusion today uh, talking about Intel. So I would like to recommend it to you guys and you can find it here in the info cards above. And um, other than that, there is not much else I can tell you at the moment. Other than thanks a ton for watching and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Bye bye.